Ricky, uh, Dorothy versus Alice. Oh dear. Well, I don't think we're in G rating anymore, Toto. Oh! Very nice, very nice. Star Wars versus Star Trek. Jordy, I am your father. Oh, so you're a black guy? No. Where on earth would you get an idea like that? Ash? Pikachu, I choose you! Versus Ash. Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Great Guy. Remember, it's a you don't have. Versus battles are everywhere now. At least, in terms of talking about movies. Granted, there were certainly a few in the old days with monster films, but for years, even when audiences demanded a crossover, it almost never happened. But nowadays, producers are finally waking up and using their copyrights wiser. Well, for the most part. And getting versus battles we always want to see. Even if sometimes we wish we didn't see them. So this Nostalgia Ween, I'm trying to see if I can cash in on the next big fan. <laughs> oh, suck it up! <laughs> Pokemon Go fuckers. <laughs> if you're wondering where a lot of this started in recent years, you can make the very real argument that it was possibly Freddy vs. Jason. Like many franchises, these started off from groundbreaking starts and deteriorated to ground burying corpses. Or, in this case, the same thing. Friday the 13th and Nightmare on Elm Street were horror classics of the 80s that were given so many sequels they became literally comical. I'm still shocked the poster for Jason Takes Manhattan doesn't look like this. They got so silly and crowd pandering that audiences demanded the ultimate crowd pandering. After that. After that too. Christ, these movies. It was bringing them together. After years of begging, they finally made it happen. And who better to take charge of these two classic monsters than the director of Chucky's comeback, with a question mark, and of course the warm-up Bad Last Airbender movie. Let's wrap up Nostalgia Ween with one of the biggest horror crossovers ever. Good guess. Freddy vs. Jason. It opens with Freddy Krueger remembering the good old days of the bad old days. The Springwood Slasher. That's what they called me. I remember also looking 20 years younger, but my memory's weird that way. The parents burn him alive after the justice system lets him go, and he talks to the audience about what became of him. When I was alive, I might have been a little body, but after they killed me, I became something much, much worse. Sequels. Weird, power glove promoting sequels. But he brings up that somehow people have forgotten about him, and he can't exist if people aren't afraid. Being dead wasn't a problem, but being forgotten, now that's a bitch! I've become Basic Instinct too. Yeah, that was the thing- YOU DIDN'T EVEN KNOW THAT! So he uses what's left of his power to bring Jason back to make people remember him, as we're given this pretty classic horror film setup. <laughs> is that you? <laughs> okay, now this is something I want to introduce to the younger viewers in the audience. <clears throat> this is what they used to call a rated R film. I know you think the most extreme films go up to PG-13, but there was a day when movies went up to R. They were called the non-pussy years, which ironically had a lot more pussy. Once in a while there are films that dare to venture into that realm, but as long as Hollywood thinks 13 is the only demographic that exists, they are but whisper. This Elizabeth Banks prototype is of course attacked by the resurrected Jason, causing her to hide. Oh, thank God, I thought this tree was a person. I'm pretty dumb. But it turns out it's just a dream by Kruger, who looks like his mother, who convinces Jason to kill the kids on Elm Street. The children have been very bad on Elm Street. Make them remember what fear tastes like! But wait, shouldn't I be on a space station in the future? And shouldn't you be aware that you're a fictional character in a movie? Quiet or I'll tell the guy who did The Last Witch Hunter to give you another reboot! They're really doing that? Yeah, sorry dude. We then cut to a house in 2003 where... These characters are inside, playing Fuck, Mary Kill with the Three Stooges. Clearly someone understands the female teenage mind here. Which one had the super bad toupee here? This is stupid, y'all. Oh, come on! Is this what we're doing all night? Cause y'all, this is really stank. <sighs> Let me guess. She sounds like that throughout the entire movie. Dropkick your ass, fruit fruit dogs that keeps humping this big old. Come on, get real. Let's go shake our ass to the dance floor. Mm-hmm. And uh, who wrote this film again? 
you know, white people, can we just not white people today? It's exhausting sometimes. I need a break from us. Maybe some of this forced exposition will help balance things out. No one's ever gonna live up to the fuzzy memory of your first love, Lori. You were fucking 14. Yeah, I know we were young, but what Will and I had was real. Didn't miss the real just dropkick your ass without so much as a goodbye handshake? Christ, why don't you just pause it and show her stats like a video game character? It's much easier to take than the natural human dialogue. I mean, Lori, you've barely gone out Since what? Since my mom died? Or since I realized that represents my broken family character arc. Did I randomly mention I majored in spraying gas barrels and lighting torches? I hope that in no way plays into anything! So while they all try to figure out which Nickelodeon TV movie they're dressed for, two of them take their sescapades upstairs, where Jason is waiting. <laughs> okay, I'll give this movie credit. Murder by bed sandwich is not something I see very often. <laughs> Quick, let's go out in the rain where our clothes can get tighter. You kids need some assistance? The cops think it's more than a coincidence that a murder happened at this house on Elm Street, but they know even saying Kruger's name can give him more power. It's gotta be Freddy Krueger. Hey, don't even say that son of a bitch's name out loud. We just took care of our Beetlejuice, Voldemort, and Candyman problem. When will people learn names are bad? They question Lori at the station while the boy hitting on her swears revenge on whoever killed his friend. I'm gonna take him out myself, Trey. I swear to God. But the deep fried Sandman comes in to make things worse. Okay, I'm all right. <laughs> well, that was a natural thing to say. Okay, I'm all right. I just thought I'd calmly alert the audience of that. I'm okay, I'm all right. Freddy seems to catch the same talking to the crowd virus. Not strong enough yet. Well, I will be soon enough. That effect did look pretty lame. I think Link's pixelated shadow would have gotten a bigger scare than that. Well, excuse me, princess. But Jason finishes what he started as he cuts off his dad's head so smoothly that it hops off his neck when lightly touched. <laughs> Christ, I think Barbie's plastic head is harder to take off. <sighs> oh, but I swear to God I was gonna take out the killer. Ah, never mind. Talk of the murders reach a mental institution on the acronyms attempting to be clever news, where Lori's old boyfriend Will, played by Jason Ritter, watches in horror. Come on, turn it back on, man! I never asked for anything, just turn on the fucking TV, please! Grunkle Stan is on another killing spree! <laughs> it's okay, I got a ton of them in my Dipper joke book. Will and his friend break out of the institution, though, to warn Lori and prove they're not crazy. In the most crazy way possible. One, two, Freddy's coming for you. Cause that's when he comes for you. In your dreams. He came back. Oh, back for revenge in our nightmares. Hi Mark, by the way. I'm a friend of Will's real sweet guy. You're gonna die! Will finally shows himself by peering on the other side of the hallway. Guess Mark was his opening act? But she passes out, resulting in her recovering in the nurse's office. Where I guess friends can wait. Got your nose! And some shitty CGI! Oh thank god, I just dreamed our effects were that bad. So Will and Mark go to see what they can figure out about Kruger, but it looks like all the information is not available. Or actually it is, they just literally black it all out. That wouldn't cause any suspicion! Uh, excuse me, I noticed everything in this history book about World War II was blacked out. Well, that's because it didn't happen. Oh, okay, I totally accept that. Uh, but what about this part where Osama Bin Laden is crossed out in Cran and the World Trade Center is put back where it was? Oh, that also didn't happen. Got it. Oh, I'm learning a lot today. Oh, uh, what about this guy and his VP claiming they didn't say all these famously recorded things? You didn't black that out. Oh, we don't have to. People just believe that one for some reason. Oh, he did sacrifice a lot. He did. He did. But Will, strangely enough, has a hard time believing all this. They never told us about Freddy because that's how they decided to beat him. They locked up all the kids who'd made contact with him so they wouldn't infect the others. That's crazy. That's why I broke out, to warn Lori about this crazy thing I don't believe in. What am I doing again? Insert early 2000 blurry cam filmmakers thought would be cool. Whoa, how come I can't focus on anything avant-garde? As everyone partakes in a cornfield rave. A uh, thing? Man, this party's awesome! I especially love the crucifying kids over there! Meanwhile, one of the nerdy kids tries hitting on Lori, but Kia tells him to buzz off. 
you tear me down to make yourself feel better because you really hate yourself. Which is kind of pathetic when you actually stop and think about it. Assuming, of course, you can think. Well, I don't know about you, but that drew me closer to him. Come on, come on, let's dance. Come on, Linderman, let's go. I really dug all that stuff about you saying I'm pathetic. You really know all the lines. Will finds Lori, though, and approaches her. They seem, though, to have a hard time figuring out what's going on. Police have been acting really weird, like they know something, and... Where was your dad? What is going on, Will? Well, look, four years ago, I thought I... Oh, enough with this bullshit talk. Let's go shake our ass for the dance floor. Come on. Oh, yeah, screw murder, man! Dance! It's all about the dancing! Haven't you learned that getting our priorities straight has never been a priority? So Freddy tries to go after a passed-out girl in her dreams. Funny, because being drunk stops REM sleep. But Jason kills her in the real world before he can get to her. She's mine! 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 It's like an intern eating the last donut at work. Rude! Some other teens see Jason and light him on fire, but that just makes him mad. <laughs> now I got nothing to say. This is awesome. The teens escape just in time for Will to reveal a big secret. The reason I was sent to Weston is because I saw your dad kill your mom. Well, my mom died in a car accident. She stabbed herself repeatedly while driving. Yeah, I'm not even kidding. He talks about how he sees her get stabbed several times, yet the official cause is car accident. How does anyone believe these half-assed cover-ups? Sylvester Hiccup and Yellow Feathers would have a better cover-up than you! You can't trust him, Lori. Whatever you do, don't go home with him. See, you didn't understand. You still don't. You were confused. Stop it! Both of you, stop it! Both of us are being choked! What am I supposed to stop? Breathing? Lori! <laughs> Lori finds out that what Will said might, and by might, I mean obviously, be true, as Mark starts to be messed with by Freddy. Yeah, I wonder what's coming. No kidding! I thought you really wanted us to focus on the medicine in that cabinet. Way to catch us off guard! He shows him his dead brother who commits suicide and... Oh, right. Wait a minute. Is that the that bully from Christmas Story? But now he just won't stop! Holy smokes, it is! It is the bully from Christmas Story! Somebody please wake me up! Okay, clearly the dialogue mocking him has to be this. What, are you gonna cry now? Come on, cry, baby, cry for me. Come on, cry. <laughs> you don't need any effects. His yellow eyes are enough. In case you're wondering, by the way, we're an hour into this hour and a half movie of Freddy vs. Jason. Notice anything missing? Freddy vs. Jason! There's none of it! It's like playing a fighting game, except for two-thirds of the match, you're watching Dawson's Creek for some reason. It makes no sense! You know what? I need a break from this bullshit. I'm gonna continue to find a more horrifying team up. Okay, uh, Joker versus Joker. You wanna know how I got these scars? I can't wait to show you my toys. Oh, well, that was easy. The Ring Girl versus the Grudge Girl. <laughs> get her, Stitch! Look at that! Look at the actress, you'll get it. Devil Boner versus Santa Christ. <laughs> Devil Boner vs. Chester. Delighted to meet you, sir. <laughs> Devil Boner vs. Devil's Food Cake. <laughs> Devil Boner vs. Hyper Fangirl. Ah, I cannot see! I'm blinded by such beauty! I love you, Sugar Cube! I love you, Spiky Chain! Oh. Ah. Oh. Hey, 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 you're supposed to be fighting! <laughs> Put that down as a draw. Oh, yeah, kiss no, right there, kiss no, right there. Oh, no, not right there. Up, 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 up. Oh, you guys are So the kids are determined to figure out why Freddy was covered up. They sneak into a laboratory where they see all the past survivors. Are they dead? Yeah, they usually give dead people oxygen. But the human version of Droopy goes to see what's going on and gets axed off by Jason. All while Freddy tries to take over the mind of one of the teens. Yeah, that's what Jack Black sees in the toilet every day. 
So Freddy takes control of him, or this kid's testicles drop twice. Let me handle this bitch. As Freddy drugs Jason up and knocks him out, resulting in him ending up in Freddy's world. Tis but a scratch. We finally get a fight between these two, and honestly, it is a little cool. The Freddy throwing in pinball sounds is a little much. Tilt. You know I'm only doing this to you because Michael Myers won't return my calls. Why won't you die? The chant every critic gives when one of these comes out. It goes from red to green because... Christmas? As Freddy discovers Jason is afraid of water, reducing him down to literally a crying baby. How sweet. Now there's a face only a mother could love. <laughs> yeah. Freddy teases Jason? So Lori agrees to go inside the dream to bring Freddy to the real world so Jason can kill him. Because as we all know, when you sleep really close together, you dream the same dream. Um, science. Just give me 15 minutes and wake me up. And where's my Inception Blom? She goes inside Jason's dream where she sees Freddy torturing him. Oh, aren't you gonna help the kid? It's not my fault this bitch is dead on her feet. <laughs> you know, that wave is so happy they should run it at the end of Beverly Hillbillies. But now it's time to say goodbye to Jed and all his kin. And they would like to thank you folks for kindly dropping in. They drive to the camp where the first Friday the 13th took place. Because who knew that Crystal Lake was right next to Elm Street? It's literally across the street. As she saves and wakes up Jason, only to also find out that Freddy possessed her dad to kill her mom. Freddy! It was you! Yeah, I guess that's the big shocker in this movie. You know, if I pretended that was a good twist, would you... No, you have nothing to offer. I'm just calling that dumb. Meanwhile, the teens never learn that in a horror film you keep a lantern away from gasoline. Who the hell is a lantern in 2003? Which just gets Kia do so mad. Oh, you fucking asshole! How did it? That does not sound like someone going up against a killer. That sounds like someone annoyed that they lost their Netflix login. Oh, you fucking asshole! How did it? I just discovered the IT crowd too. So they look for any weapon they can find. America. But Lori manages to wake up while bringing Freddy with her. Little bitch. Dream science. As we finally get the big showdown we were promised. Jesus, Linda Minion. Yeah, please, go back to the kids! Clearly we haven't seen enough of them! Why don't you just call it the OC and a cough that kinda sounds like Freddy vs. Jason? If you're gonna suck her in, you might as well do it under your breath. So of course, Freddy chases after the teens because pff, why would you want to see him fight Jason? Think you're so smart, huh, bitch? You know, I use that word a lot. I really gotta learn to expand my vocabulary. It's mostly bitch-based. Freddy! I, uh, um... Guess I'm going over here? Tell me something. What is with the butternuts? You trying to compensate for something? Hmm. Oh, wow. I think that's the scariest face he's made throughout the movie. That's just longing to become a meme. Like, Walmart has edible panties, you say? Or, I farted, and it smells exactly how I look. Do what you want with it, internet, it's on me. Finally, Jason's like, piss off, bitch, my movie. And they get to some real fighting. To be fair, when they actually do fight, it is kind of fun. I like how he slams in through like a dozen windows or fires air tanks like torpedoes. Even Jason's crotch apparently is so hard, it hurts Freddy's foot. Oh my god, what are those made of? Those chomp balls from Mario 3? Hey, asshole! No, oh, I really should have thrown bitch in there. <laughs> Freddy Krueger, everybody. The master of nightmares hanging like a Christmas ornament on a broken tree. But our Kira Knightley and Orlando Bloom of this picture light the bridge on fire, blowing them up. Which, of course, is only like a light fog to them. And I'm out. Next battle will be whose reboot is worse. It's yours. It's yours. Welcome to my world, bitch! 
<laughs> you know it sounds cooler when I say it, right? It all seems to be over until Jason walks out holding Freddy's head. movie this, when it's actually Freddy vs. Jason, it is fun to see. It's goofy and over the top, but that's what you'd expect from these movies by now. Everything else, though, is just kind of dull, which sadly you'd also expect from these movies by now. The idea of grown-ups covering up Freddy's existence, even to the point of torturing innocent kids, is kind of an interesting idea, but it never really goes anywhere. It's mostly just dumb teens being dumb teens, and that's not what we wanted to see. We wanted to see two monsters kick each other's asses. And when it does that, it's great. But when it doesn't, it turns out a long haul that started a lot of cool crossovers, but definitely came from a rocky start. And at the very least, it was rated R. I'm so sick of all these PG-13 films trying to be R, but not having the cojones to go all the way. Now you hold on a minute there, sir. That is rude. <sighs> yeah, Zack Snyder and Michael Bay here. We're the kings of PG-13. We take great offense to that. Christ. You two are the reason so many R films are few and sucky now. We represent the best in corrupting young 13-year-old minds. <sighs> yeah, it's the age where they're smart enough to accept the best, but lazy enough to still accept the worst. Why, that's my thought too. No kidding. We should talk more. Come on, it's nice. No, you shouldn't. You two shouldn't do any talk. Wait a minute. The need for destruction. The lack of effort in writing. Not having a good story or characters in the least, and yet somehow always turning out a hit. By God! I've discovered the ultimate terrifying team-up! Who? Oh. Snyder and Bay, the most horrifying combination of terror ever. Witness them destroy the minds of any child who sees their work. Remember, if violence isn't the answer, then you're doing it wrong. Yeah, come on. Fear their ability to make the most amazing things suddenly seem boring and dull. Hey, babe, I only have five explosions for the seat of two people talking. Oh, well, here, take three of mine. Oh, wow, thanks. Ponder their lust for trying to make the military look good, but always somehow make them look like morons. Call it an homage, sir. A what? I just think he's kind of hot. Now that's good writing. And flee in terror from their never-ending use of hot women to distract from the obvious truth. Uh, what's that? Well, it just looks like you're clearly overcompensating. Uh, for what? Um, you really don't know. I uh, don't know what? I mean, we all discover things in our own way, but don't you think you guys might be... Just might be. Might be what? I shouldn't rush it. You'll figure it out when you figure it out. Okay, whatever. You're my bae. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, hey, look, Megan Fox. Oh, oh, yeah, she's hot. <laughs> Attractive boobies. Right. Yum, yum. Snyder and Bay, because you'll watch them. For some reason, you'll watch them. I'm the Nostalgia Critic, and don't say I didn't give you anything scary this Nostalgia Week. <laughs> Coming next week, can the ending ruin a film? If the rest of it is good, how can the ending ruin everything? But you can see it now under Vessel's ad-free early access. Just $3 a month to see tons of people's videos early, as well as a bunch of other extra features. Check it out and get the early scoop. Y'all, this is really stank. Hey, Doug Walker here, doing the charity shout out. This week we are doing the PKD Foundation. This is the only organization in the United States solely dedicated to finding treatments and a cure for polycytic kidney disease and to improve the lives of those it affects. 
They do this through promoting research, education, support, and awareness on a national level, along with direct services to local communities across the country. They are the largest private funder of PKD research. Over the last 30 years, they have invested more than 40 million in basic and clinical research. They do this with one simple goal, to discover and deliver treatments and find a cure. If you look at their site and their YouTube channel, you can see all the people they help as well as all the lives they make better. And you too can join them in that battle. So click the link, check out their great work, and see how you too can make a difference.